Okay, in our last video we looked at IMA. IMA stood for Ideal Mechanical Advantage, and it didn't take into account any kind of uh, resistance, uh, friction, or uh, wind resistance, anything like that. Now we're looking at AMA. AMA stands for Actual Mechanical Advantage. And so we're trying to calculate AMA, we're trying to look at the forces. So we have the force of resistance divided by the force of effort. I've got these backwards, don't I? So I've got to change these. So now that I've changed them, you can see that IMA is D of E over D of R, but AMA is F of R over F of E. So you take the resistance force of 50 pounds and you divide it by the effort force of 60 pounds to come up with this equation. So let's put this up here. So AMA is 50 divided by 60. And so the answer is, once again, since we're in static equilibrium, the answer is going to be exactly the same as IMA. If we weren't in stat static equilibrium, it would be something different. But since we are, it's exactly the same. So then we can calculate our efficiency. And that's the final equation. We, we have IMA, we have AMA, and then we have efficiency. So I've set it up again here. We have efficiency is equal to the actual mechanical advantage divided by the ideal mechanical advantage. And in this case, since we're in static equilibrium, we have an AMA that is 0.833 to 1, and we have an IMA that is 0.833 to 1, and in this case, we have a 1 as our efficiency. So our efficiency is the ratio of the forces divided by the distances. Because AMA is F of R over F of E, and IMA is D of E over D of R. So you calculate, first you find the missing component. Then you calculate what is the ideal mechanical advantage with the, the distances. Then you calculate what is the actual mechanical advantages with the forces. And then you get ratios of mechanical advantage and you divide the AMA divided by the IMA and then you come up with the efficiency of the system. It's not always going to be one. Anytime it's in static equilibrium it will be one. But in real life, things very seldom come out to be exactly one. So we'll have a, a lesson in the future about uh, how to recognize mechanical advantage and disadvantages and what uh, greater than one, one, and less than one are. So I hope you understood class one levers and uh, look on the website and get some example problems and start doing those. And then we'll move on to the class two levers. So thanks for watching and check out my webpage at tech-teach.com. And don't forget to look at our Moodle site for um, activities and homework assignments.